Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, his glory and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Kodash. Double honor to the true leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, Great Millstone, also known as GMS. Citation to the most wise men, the four corners of the earth, pushing his word, sincere to the truth. And Shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. This your brother, Yum Yum from GMS, Mississippi, with the intrinsic topic going into the MOTB, also known as the uh, the mark of the beast. And just through the spirit real briefly, touching upon the physical manifestation of the RFID implantable microchip that is not in the near future, but is actually in the present. Uh, a lot of individuals over in Sweden are already using this technology have already implanted themselves with this technology with this particular device and that is a sign of things that are for to come for to come on a, a larger scale but what comes along with the mark of the beast is the initial image of the beast so the initial comes before the final so the final destination is to have all individuals implanted with the particular identification mark but first everyone has to conform to the image of the beast you know and what's the image of the beast doctrine philosophies laws democracy governments rulerships but all of this world and the image of the beast excludes a god like fashion from day-to-day -day endeavors and that's why the heavenly father has it written that he that received the mark is going to receive that judgment and you have to conform to the image of the beast the image of the mark before you will actually physically allow yourself to be penetrated by the seducer and ultimately that's what it is it, it, is you being penetrated by another deity. You're being coerced by another power source. And the first commandment is to have no other gods before the heavenly father. Have no other gods before the God, or the most high God. And when you have your mind made up that you are not going to conform, you're not going to comply, what the beast system does, it's getting more and more and more draconian. They get more and more and more ruthless, more evil, more wicked. And they squeeze you. Even when a snake has eaten and is full, if they're squeezed from the tail upward, 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 upward towards the head, towards the mouth, what comes out? That food itself. So Esau eat them knows how to squeeze the people by way of famine, by way of economical troubles. And those things bring forth conformance. They bring forth compliance. So you not only conform to the image of the beast, you comply with the beast system itself. Right? And as it is written, though, hand, join, and hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. So if the the common sense judgment of that the wicked shall utterly be destroyed, the, the wicked shall utterly be rooted out of the earth and you thinking that hand joining hand by conforming and complying with the wicked system that you will, will remain unscathed it's practically insanely humanly impossible right, because if the blind lead the blind it says what, they both shall go into the ditch because the pride of Esau's heart had to, to deceived him to where he's sitting at this particular table thinking that this beast system shall become the new reality. And you can tell from these particular plagues of the pandemic that are before us right now, going into year two of having face coverings, going into year two of grandeur usage of hand sanitizer, grandeur usage of rubber gloves, grandeur usage
message of isolation. So that shows you right there as a great sign that conforming and complying is something that happens when the great squeeze comes. And lo and behold, we have not seen nothing yet. Or, you know how they say the best is still yet to come. Well, the rest of this is still yet to come. And here we are approaching the year 2022. And that year, it just as this one, as it is written, how when a woman brings forth untimely birth, how those pains, those pains slack not. Right during the time of, 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 of childbearing, those pains do not subside until that child is born. The same as the plagues that are going to be, or the pains rather, that, that are going to be upon this world, they're not going to slack until the Heavenly Father has accomplished that which He has set out for it to do. When you look at the plagues, we can call them the pains of Egypt. When the plagues happen, when the utter darkness happened, when the, the, the death of the firstborn happened, none of that was reversed or subsided until what? Until Pharaoh and his army drowned in the depths of the sea. Meaning what? It all was accomplished. And the fear of the Lord brings you forth to the love of him that brings you forth to the wisdom of him right and that's why the scripture says that through the terror of the Lord we persuade men because if a great train is coming and you set up your tent for the night to sleep on it because the rails were warmer than the, the cold ground and I warn you and tell you that a train's coming, a train's coming. That's through fear. Because you could get maimed, you could get dismembered, you could get bodily hurt, or you could ultimately die. But through that fear, you would jump up, you would grab your belongings if you have time. But for the most part, you would jump up and, and, and get yourself in an in, in aware state. But many have their, their eyes closed and their ears stopped up in today's time. Because unto a certain few it was given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to those that are without that understanding, it was not given unto them. So no man or no woman on this earth can have their eyes pried open to see the true glory that the Heavenly Father had prepared for those that love him. No one has the strength of might to unstop the ears of those who have no understanding. But the scripture says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because through it all, you're the only one that can pray to the Heavenly Father to grant unto you those things that you desire. People can always say, yeah, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. You know, but you have to do your part. You have to show the Heavenly Father that you believe in Him, that you trust in Him. And the best way to do that is to pray that the Heavenly Father enlighten you and increase you continually in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and learning of Him and His only begotten Son. And to, to, to keep you from these plagues that are for to come. The time of Jacob's trouble that's imminent the time of these race wars and race riots that are imminent. Even the pride of, of women's liberation. You know, a lot of women right now believe that they don't need a man. And that's fine. That's fine whether you need a man or you want a man. But at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father said that he shall make a man a hiding place from the wind. And that wind is those hard times that are for to come. When society breaks down, 
when everything you see that man built, man built the homes, man built the roadways, man, man built the bridges, man built the buildings that you work in, man built the, the, the vacation resorts and retreats that you go to. So when society breaks down and where these men who have established civilization are now living in an uncivilized, <laughs> an uncivilized world, I mean, you're vulnerable, absolutely vulnerable. A fence like this, it's gonna be nothing for someone to get over there. Like, you, you know, it's not like you're just in a in a walled or 10 foot thick gated community to where people will not even, you know, try to do harm. The scripture says that every man's hand shall be toward his neighbor, right? It says that, 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 that women shall ha have no bridegrooms because they're going to die. I mean, the men are going to be destroyed, going to be destroyed for the famine, the lack of bread, the famine of water. Like a lot of things are going to get bad to the point to where even our human minds won't be able to fathom it. We won't be able to s s speak now and say, OK, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen because the Heavenly Father has plagues that are prepared for this place that are not even written in the Holy Bible. But he tells you of some great, terrible times. He reminds you to to remember remember Lot's wife. He he reminds you to remember Sodom and Gomorrah. He reminds you to remember that this earth is reserved unto fire. So the Heavenly Father has given us all, all of the the keys and the tools to succeed and be successful. And that's why the scriptures the scriptures say that 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 we knoweth all things because we have the understanding to obtain salvation. We have everything that we need to 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 be able to be able to endure until the end. But it's all about that endurance. And that's why the scripture says, "Blessed is he that readeth and keepeth his garments." You know, at least he walked walk naked and they see his shame and what's that shame mean meaning being unclothed with the spirit being unclothed with the word of the lord because the word of the lord is our shield it's our buckler it's our sword it's our helmet it's the shoes upon our feet like being completely and fully clothed with the word of yahweh through his spirit through his most holy spirit one of the most difficult things on planet earth but also one of the most easiest and not only one of the most easiest but of the utmost desired because this is something that is worthy of salvation this is something that's worthy of life because a great majority of individuals that you see that you know of that you've heard of that you uh deal with on a consistent basis, regular basis, non-consistent basis, whatever the case may be, a great majority of those individuals that you know or have known of are going to perish. And knowing that right now, right? Knowing the time right now, you do what? You pray that the Heavenly Father will have mercy on you, that you be not numbered to the sword, that you be not numbered with the number of them for destruction. Because the, the, the destruction is definitely coming. It's just a matter of time. The same way Esau Edom planned this pandemic and said that it's not a matter of, of, of if, but a matter of when. On the righteous side, the prophets are telling you that it's not a matter of if the Heavenly Father is going to visit this earth, but of when. And that's why the scriptures tell you to hold fast to that which thou hast, that no man may take thy crown. Meaning what? Hold fast to this wisdom, this knowledge, and this understanding. Because once you let it go, you really, you really have nothing to look forward to. Once you no longer take heed and you start eating 
from the table of the uncircumcised, meaning the spiritually uncircumcised, doing the things that these people that are wicked at heart are doing and despising the only God, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, then you shall receive with their portion. Because the enemy, Esau Edom, is going to drink of the dregs of the dregs of the cup. If you desire to, to, to share a drink with him, the Heavenly Father, he's known for giving people over into their lust. So as a, a man desires, so, so, so shall he be. You know, but ultimately, Mosai is willing. You were able to get some edification out of that. And I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekahakwadash. Double honor to the truth leaders of the nation of Israel in these last days, Great Millstone, also known as GMS. The salutation to the most wise men, the four corners of the earth, pushing his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom to the sisters that support and subscribe wholeheartedly to the message of deliverance and salvation. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai as well. Until next time, let's say Shalom.